Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how we can uh, generate complex data models into JSON, XML or anything else and return them either to a file or via the browser using a RESTful API. Now the most basic way of doing that is using POCOs and we've reviewed that in quite a few videos and articles, one of them is saving POCO to XML and saving an object to JSON. Those are basically valid and, and great ways of doing that but in my perspective they require a lot of work. So we can use these two basic methods as a fallback position but when we want to create quick uh, complex JSON models or XML models we have a helper tool for you to do that. So let's say that we want to display the list of orders per customers in a JSON format and we want to do that as quickly and as easily as we can. So let's do that. First thing we're going to do, I'm going to place this logic in the Northwind Orders module and I'm going to add a new item which is going to be a business process that will run over the orders. We'll call it Get Customer Orders. And its basic execution is simple. We're going to say we are running on models.orders. That's our form and we're going to get a text of customer ID and we're going to filter according to it perfect and we're going to have a nice little live row okay so this is the basic controller it will iterate our orders according to the specific customer ID and do what we want it to do so let's save it Now we want to use an object that will do all the heavy lifting for us. For that we have the ENV Web DLL that you are familiar with from all of our web related demos. I'm going to go and fetch it. I'm going to go to my correct place, Northwing Training, .NET, Lib, and in it we have ENV Web. Now the ENV Web has an interesting object called Data List. So I'm going to create a member here from ENV Web data list. I'm going to call it result and I will return it. Perfect. Okay, so I've created the member and I'm returning it from the run method and on the live row I'm going to say var item equals result add item. I'm going to add an item to the list and to that item I can set values. I can say item.set put here orders.orderID orders.orderDate and maybe even set something with a custom name shipper and say orders.shipper ship via. Perfect. Okay. So all we needed to do here, let's just build it and make sure it's okay and it's built. So what have we done here? We've added the, let's put it as a, I think it's better like this. We've added the result object, we've added it as the return value of the run method, and on live row we've added item to this list. Perfect, now let's test it. So to test it I'm going to go to Northwind and I'm going to also add a reference to ENV Web. Perfect. And in the application on start, I'll do the following. I'll say, okay, var data list equals new orders dot get customer order and run it with a specific customer ID for testing. Okay. And that will give me a data list to work with. And now I will say system IO file write all text, I want to write it to a file, I'm going to create a file called cdemoorders.json and in it I will write data list dot to json. Okay, let's run this code. Yeah, let's set nothing as the starter project and run this code. Yeah, 
Okay, and a file was created. We can see here in demos that the orders JSON was just created. I'll drop it here, and we can see the JSON files that we wanted. Okay, I'm, I've pressed a Control KD to format the file to make it easier to read. Control KD is defined somewhere around here. Format document, and I can see that I've created the JSON array that I wanted and the different items in that array. So let's recap on what we had to do in order to achieve this goal. So in our get customers orders, okay, we've added, let's go back to side by side. <laughs> we've added the result object, okay? We made it the return value of the run method and we've returned it. And for every row, we've added an item to it, setting the order ID, order date, and created a custom column, shipper, that will hold the ship value. To test this, we've changed the application core on start, just because we're lazy, so we put it here. We've called our controller, saved the result, and then called the to JSON method. Now, this object is very versatile, and I can save it in any format that I want. So I can take this line, I'll duplicate it a few times, and say XML, or CSV. And when I'll run it, we'll look at the folder, and we'll see that now we have CSV and XML. We drop them all in Visual Studio. So here is orders XML. Again, I'll use Control KD to format the document. So we've got it in XML format, CSV format, and JSON format. Perfect. So, so far for our testing code, let's go and delete our testing code and use it from the web. So we'll go back to our ENV web. Let's just commit everything we've done so far. Let's revert the change to application call. So we only have the get customers all those objects that we wanted. Perfect. So using the data list. Perfect. Now let's go to um, our Northwind web project. And in our home controller, let's add a new method. Public, public, let's talk about it in a second, customer orders. And it will get a string ID that we'll use as the customer ID. And we'll just start by returning customer plus ID. Great. I'll open a browser and say localhost home slash customer orders slash ALFKI. We let the web browser, the web server refresh for a second. And we've got customer ALFKI. So we see that the value, okay, over here came into these parameters that we can use. Great. Now, let's use that to call our Northwind orders. So instead of returning a string, I'm going to return env web data result. Okay. And we're going to call the return Northwind orders dot get customer order. Yes, we should do a new over here. <laughs> run and send it the ID. Perfect. So now, if we we'll go to our browser and refresh the page, we'll get the data back by default as JSON. And you can see here I'm using a JSON formatter, so we took this raw view and display it properly. We can ask it to return XML by changing the response that we want to get. So here it is in XML, here it is in CSV. So we downloaded the CSV file and we can say even HTML and it will create a little HTML view of this data. Okay. So this is how we can use the data list item to easily create a RESTful API to return complex data models. So let's recap on what we've done. In our home controller, we've added the customer's orders method, it receives an ID, it returns a data result, and we are calling the get customer order result that we've created earlier. Perfect. So returning 
or using the data list as a result in a REST call in mvc.net. Perfect. But so far what we've done is pretty trivial, it's a very flat list, but let's go ahead and make it multidimensional. Let's say that we not only want to see the orders, we also want to see the order details. We want to see the information about the different items in that order or any complex data model that we want to create. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a var details data list and we'll call it new env web data list. This details data list will hold the order details of a specific order. So here we are in the only row of a specific order. We're going to set it to the order item, the details, and we're going to put here the details data list. And then let's go ahead and populate it. So I'm going to say var order details equals new models order details. And I'll say order details for each row in which the order details dot order ID is equal to orders dot order ID. Okay, this will iterate the details of that specific order that we currently own in this only row. And we'll say um, var order details item equals details data list dot add item. And to that item, we can set our values. We want to say order details dot product ID, order details dot quantity, and order details dot unit price, and even say order details item line total, and set it to an expression like order details dot quantity times order details dot unit price. So we've built it. Let's rebuild our web project. Great. And let's use it in our browser. So now if we refresh the page, remember we're still requesting for a response in HTML format, so it will create an HTML for us. So we have the order, order day cheaper, and for everyone the details will have product ID, quantity, unit price, and line total. Of course, if we'll ask it in JSON format, which is the common thing we'll do, you see that we got the complex JSON objects with the order information, and for every order its details. And just like we've done this in a, a two-dimensional way, this method is a, a infinite dimensions. You can do whatever you want with it, how many uh, structures that you want to create. I think most structures can be created with this little data list and data item objects. Uh, and let's review what we've done so far. So to add the details to the equation, we've created another data list, one for every order, which will hold the details. And we've added it to the order items, okay, the one that we've defined over here. And then we took the order details table, iterated it based on the correct order ID, created an order detail item for every item, and added the values to it. Now, this is a great method to easily create complex JSON or XML models and expose them to the world. It's a lot less work than using POCOs, and since 90% of the interactions that we do with the web are getting data, I think this can save quite a lot of work for you guys. I hope you enjoy this.